More and more every day, iPhone 12 rumors are confirmed as fact or fiction. Today, Kevin is going to... It, Kevin? Send these landlords to the depths. Psh, oh, hey, you cove kids. While my parents were cleaning up their basement, we rediscovered the Pirate's Constructible Strategy Game. These ships came in little, like, booster packs that you would get at Jewel or whatever, and you could pop them out and then have naval adventures on your tabletop. I think I may be getting stir-crazy. You know, the nice part about living today is that if life is stripping away your sanity with its daily horrors, you can just open up your phone and go hunt for pretend monsters. Make yourself socially acceptable, or take way too many pictures of cardboard caravels. L'image numérique. The reality spicer. As Techable's contracted camera haver, I want to talk about what pictures and videos might look like on the iPhone's eyeball quartet. Slap on some flannel and don a beanie. It's time for Photography School Crash Course. It's actually really hot down here. There's a furnace back there. Tentatively set to be released this year, the high-end 6.1 and 6.7 inch iPhone 12s feature three lenses on the back, a wide, ultra-wide, and telephoto. There will also be a LiDAR sensor. We'll get to that later in the video. A camera at the same distance from a subject will produce a different image based on a lot of factors, one of the largest being the lens. Phones lack the physical space for large lenses, so developers offer multiple the user can switch between for focal length flexibility. In simplest terms, focal length is the distance between where light converges in your lens and the sensor, a solid state device that interprets light waves as digital signals forming an image. Prime lenses, the ones in most phones, have set focal lengths, while lenses used for photography and film can have variable focal lengths. The focal length determines the magnification of the image, how large things appear, and the lens's field of view, how much of any given space the lens can see. Wide-angle lenses have shorter focal lengths. They can see a lot, but offer little magnification. The focal length for ultra-wide lenses is even shorter. They see more and distort more. These lenses are typically employed to lend depth and definition to environmental shots. Watch a Wes Anderson film and you'll see a lot of wide and ultra-wide usage. Telephoto lenses have longer focal lengths. They magnify faraway subjects, but their field of view is narrow, like a telescope. If you see a nice picture of LeBron on the court, it was likely taken with a telephoto lens. While field of view is tied to your lens's focal length, the same lens will look different when projecting onto sensors of different sizes. All sensors are measured against 35mm film since it came first. This is a standard issue 18-55mm lens that came with my Canon T3i DSLR camera. My camera sensor is smaller than 35mm film, so the image it captures is going to be cropped. The sensor has a crop factor of 1.6. Do that math and this lens equates to a 28.8 to 88 millimeter lens on a full frame sensor. Instead of dipping into the ultra wide range on my camera, this lens is in the middle of the road for wide angle lenses and can go up to the low end of telephoto. Now, why am I telling you this? Guess how big the sensor in your phone camera is. <laughs> yeah. The iPhone 11 Pro's wide and ultra-wide lenses have a focal length of 4.25mm and 1.54mm, but because the sensor is so small, it has an adjusted crop, resulting in the lenses being equivalent to 26mm and 13mm full frame. Alright, but the telephoto lens? Its full frame equivalent is 52mm, not what most photographers would consider telephoto. That's near the field of view and magnification of the human eye. What can we expect out of these lenses on the iPhone 12? Well, the word on the street is at least the upper builds are going to be borrowing design elements from the iPad Pro, but I suspect the cameras won't be a part of that. According to a blog from the makers of Halide, the ultra-wide sensor is noticeably inferior on the iPad Pro compared to the iPhone 11 Pro. My guess is the 6.1 triple camera system will use similar lenses, if not the same as the iPhone 11 Pro. I can't emulate megapixel quality, but here is a iPhone 12 field of view approximation based on the iPhone 11 Pro's lenses and sensors. 
For this shot, I'm assuming the lenses on the 12 will remain the same focal length, which probably won't happen, but I've adjusted my Canon DSLR and Sony Xperia cameras so we have the same full field equivalents. Again, this is not what the photos are going to look like, it's an estimate of the field of view. The 6.7 inch is rumored to have a larger sensor. 9 to 5 Mac, working off a report from Ming Chi Kuo, says the 1 over 3.6 sensor will be replaced with a 1 over 1.9 sensor for the wide angle lens. But as I understand it, the wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 Pro had a 1 over 2.55 sensor. So, I'm not really sure what they're talking about here. I expect the 6.7 inch will feature a limited optical zoom, just like the iPhone 11 Pro Max did. Go beyond that and you'll start seeing noise. That's just an inherent drawback to camera phones. What, what, why does the phone have a camera go to it? It's a camera phone. Camera phone manufacturers try to make up for this by increasing the megapixel count. The more pixels you have, the further you can digitally zoom before you lose smoothness. Packing more pixels into the same size sensor means making those pixels smaller. Smaller pixels have less surface area to capture light, which results in worse looking low light photos. Whether you're shooting on RE Reds or a Walgreens disposable, the image quality your camera produces drops by big dollars if you don't have good lighting. For phone cameras, low light is your worst enemy, and low light in their terms can mean indoors with the lights on. I haven't seen a megapixel count for any of the 12 models yet. I wouldn't be surprised at the addition of a megapixel or two with the larger sensor, but then the jury is out on whether low light photos will look better or worse. LiDAR is a form of laser scanning used to map 3D environments. This is achieved by measuring the amount of time a laser travels from a sensor and back, called time of flight. Anything you use a tape measure for? Measure with the speed of light. What can LiDAR do at the high end? How about guide autonomous vehicles, measure glacier change, anticipate weather phenomenon, optimize wind energy efficiency, determine the molecular density of any given object? So that's pretty cool. Are we going to be seeing any of that with the iPhone 12? Probably not. Gaming app integration and virtual tours are more along the lines of what we should expect. I'd like to create a virtual ocean. The 2020 iPhone SE recently dropped, featuring a single camera portrait mode that shows some impressive results. Halide's blog post praises the machine learning on the SE, noting, this is quote, the first iPhone that can generate a portrait effect using nothing but a single 2D image. If this software makes it onto the iPhone 12 6.7 inch Grand Galleon, whatever it's going to be called, what will be the results of photos taken in conjunction with the LiDAR sensor? I'm curious, time's going to tell. Point your camera up to see if that cloud suggests rain. Aim at a person, find their name and TikTok profile. Let me tell you about my boat. Yikes. This is another piece of technology with the possibility of becoming socially transformative, just like cell phones were not too long ago. The time is near when this radar for rocket scientists will be used for more than, at the consumer level at least, convincing ourselves Pikachu is real. Leave us a like and hit that subscribe button if you want to see more technology breakdowns. Drop some thoughts into the comments below. What do you think the iPhone 12's cameras are going to be capable of?